guys, it's the Z06 Baron here, and today I have a very interesting video that I hope will um, help a lot of people out. And that is, I was having a misfire that, after hours of trying to figure out what it was, was caused by the next cylinder over having a broken valve spring, believe it or not. Um, and I think this, this case will change based on the firing order and which you know spring breaks. And obviously the one cylinder that's not having compression is upset as well, but I found in my case, it was causing the next cylinder over because of the firing order to appear like it's cold. Um, so a lot of little things to cover, so I'll try and brush through this and um, hopefully this will be informational for others. But basically um, I was driving home one day and uh, the car started shaking a lot. I wasn't on it at all. I was. It was a very gentle drive at the time. I hadn't even floored it by the time, the whole trip I hadn't floored it once. And I was very gently downshifting to a light under 3000 RPM and something changed and I could tell the exhaust sounded a little bit off and then the car was just shaking at lower RPMs and just jittering around. And it felt like a misfire, but I wasn't exactly sure at the time. But I drove it home, uh, turned the car off. Later I came out, fired it up. Uh, 30 seconds after I checked the headers to see if any of them were cold and sure enough this header was just ambient It was as cold as could be and all the others headers were boiling hot within 30 40 seconds of running You know, they heated up already to 180 degrees. So I was like, oh, well, there you go. That cylinder is misfiring So I proceeded to check spark. I checked the spark plug. I had a spare spark plug laying around So I just kind of propped it up right here wired this down to a ground it sparks great i checked the coil i swapped the coils on the next cylinder over i even checked the voltage on the injector as the car was running it was getting good voltage although i couldn't check the frequency of like when exactly it was supposed to fire um, and then just out of paranoia i thought okay maybe it's getting good voltage but the injector itself is clogged i replaced the injector still same issue i was just perturbed i, I then checked um, compression on that cylinder the compression was great then I checked the valve springs to see if maybe something had broken then I bore scoped inside that cylinder to see if maybe one of the springs or the valves was cracked or something even though I was getting good compression nothing then I was kind of stumped had tried and exhausted all my options then I checked the next cylinder over compression this one right here and it was zero not five not sixty zero I was like, there's no way. So I then checked the third one over 220. So I was like, okay. Well then I, I had taken pictures when I pulled off the valve cover of all the valve springs. And then I went back and looked. I wasn't looking at these two, but sure enough, this valve spring on the intake of the next cylinder over was broken. So obviously that causes, as it's trying to compress and fire, it's back flowing into the intake. But I observed that it was also based on the firing order, it was sucking out from the next cylinder over and causing a simulated misfire. Um, and the whole thing was just shaking around. It's just super unhealthy. But um, I was worried that, okay, valve spring broke. Did the valve drop low enough to touch off on the piston? So I bore scoped inside. Everything looks okay. It doesn't look like the valve touched off on the piston. It doesn't look like it's damaged. It doesn't look like anything's broken. In fact, they looked really good. Um, I believe the valves have been, I'm 99% sure the valves have been replaced on this. The heads have been off. I see all these markings on it. I'm confident that the valves have been replaced on this. Um, I don't know for sure until I pull the head, which I'm going to try and avoid doing for now, or I try and replace the spring with the head on, which you can do on the LSs. Uh, basically, you bring it to top dead center, you put compressed air, or you can stick some rope in there to where it pushes up on the valves, where once you're pulling down on them, they don't drop down into the cylinder. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm waiting for the parts to get here to do that. But um, once I get the parts, I'm going to replace that one valve spring. Um, this car does have a cam. With that being said, 99% of the time, you have to replace the valve springs because it has you know, a larger lope and it pushes further down and the OEM valve springs aren't made to handle that. So you need more robust valve springs. 
You have to be careful because if you go, you know, too far, the valves aren't built for that, and it's putting too much tension on the valves, and then the rockers, and then lifters. So there's lots of things you have to be careful about. But I'm gonna try and figure out um, what cam I have based, you know, get a dial indicator and figure out how much travel it has up and down on the intake and the exhaust, and then get the right springs for it. For now, I'm gonna try and put in an OEM spring back in, and then. Once I do that, I'll check compression. If I have good compression, that probably means that the valve is okay, it's seating properly, and I can later on uh, replace all of the valve springs. But anyway, who knew that an appeared cylinder misfire on one of the cylinders, no codes whatsoever, not one, would be caused by the intake valve on the next cylinder over breaking. But I thought I would share that with you guys. Um, I'm disappointed but I'm happy to find the root cause of the problem and I'll be updating once I get all the parts here. One thing I wanted to point out that's kind of a drag. To be able to turn the cylinder, I was gonna reach down here and turn the crank. Well, it turns out the power steering rack is a half an inch in front of that bolt. Uh, I believe it's an inch and sixteenths. It's an ARP bolt on an aftermarket harmonic balancer but I need a crow's foot or to weld some sort of socket and cut off to where I can fit it in there to be able to turn and crank the engine, which is, that's a pain. So I'm also waiting on parts for that uh, for this car. Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I love this car. And I, one of my past videos, I made a huge list of all the things wrong with the C6 Corvettes. I love these cars. I'm not trying to trash them. I'm not trying to talk junk about them, but they break. And here's another clear example of that. I'm not just making this stuff up. These cars have some issues. And I love them. I, I mean, they're so capable. I love these cars. But I'm going to give you the truth of issues I have with this. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Comment if you have any questions. And yeah, I enjoy sharing this with um, YouTube so other people can learn. Because I know working on this car and getting this car, the reason why I got it and... I'm familiar more with it was because of YouTube. So, see ya.